Star Wars fans go from irrational exuberance to managing expectations in the space of three days. It's Friday, May 27th, and you'll hear about those stories and more this week in Star Wars. This Week in Star Wars is your source for new and noteworthy developments from the galaxy far, far away. I'm your host, Matt Fox. And now, this week's lead stories. Like a bolt from the internet blue on Tuesday, May the 24th, StarWarsCelebration.com went live with a teaser graphic featuring simply the Roman numeral 6 on a starry background. The only other information on the page was a link which allowed visitors to provide their contact information with the promise of future Celebration 6 updates being sent directly to their inboxes. Never content to just be content, Star Wars fans immediately started filling in the dearth of information with information of their own, and it quickly became accepted gospel that the next day, May the 25th, would see an announcement of a date and location for the upcoming and widely expected, and now all but confirmed, Star Wars Celebration 6. The support for the belief that May 25th would see an announcement is, of course, rooted in the fact that May 25th, 1977, was the original release date for Star Wars in the United States. Well, May 25th came and went without any further information, as did May 26th. And as we sit here on May 27th, we continue to be in a hold pattern for further information. Rest assured, when that announcement comes, be it today, tomorrow, next week, or next month... This Week in Star Wars will bring it to you immediately via our Twitter feed, TWISWCast, on our Facebook page, and possibly a breaking news podcast. Because, of course, God knows it won't be posted anywhere else on the internet. Almost lost in all the hullabaloo over Star Wars Celebration 6 teaser announcement was George Lucas's appearance on Attack of the Show on G4 TV. The flanneled one was appearing along with Disney Imagineer Tom Fitzgerald to pimp the new Star Tours ride, but topics moved on to such things as the upcoming 3D re-release of all six original films, which, as an aside, Lucas assured us would be of the highest quality and not at all like those other crappy 3D remakes that you see out there. But near the end of the interview, almost as an aside... Host Kevin Perea asked Lucas about the long-awaited, long-promised, and under-delivered live-action television show. Lucas's answer created something of a furious nerd storm running in parallel to that created by the Celebration 6 announcement. The substance of Lucas's answer was that the show was on a production hiatus, until the cost of producing a show to the technical standards that he expected were reduced to a point at which the show would be fiscally viable. However, that response was prefaced by these two sentences. I'm a man! I'm 40! I'm not a a kid! After which he actually said... Uh, It sits on the shelf. Um, We have 50 hours. The vagueness of that answer allowed the blogosphere and fanboys alike to put the best possible spin on the answer and proclaim that 50 hours of the live-action show had been filmed and were, quote, in the can. Some more restrained media outlets, however, questioned how 50 hours of Star Wars material could be filmed without anybody finding out about it, let alone any announcements about cast or production details. Website io9 contacted Lucasfilm Public Relations to find out exactly what the creator meant by this cryptic comment. The clarification came down from on high that what Lucas actually meant by saying that they had 50 hours was that they had 50 hours worth of scripts, which is not only more believable, but also fully consistent with what we have been told and what has been rumored up to this point. Full video of the interview is available on the G4 Attack of the Show website, and the io9 follow-up story is available on the io9.com website, both of which are linked to on the This Week in Star Wars Facebook page. This week's collecting news, lots of images of new products appeared on the web this week. An image of an alleged Y-Wing Toys R Us exclusive in a vintage package appeared on eBay this week, although there has been no confirmation of the product, only rumors up to this point. 
However, collecting forums across the web dissected the pictures of the vintage packaging, like the some sort of Star Wars Zapruder film, and we can only assume that soon we will know one way or the other whether or not it is actually true. Less controversial were the images of the Stealth Operations Clone Trooper from the Clone Wars line, a.k.a. Blackout, which will be appearing in the Wave 11 case, which we discussed last week on This Week in Star Wars. There were also images on Jedi Insider of the upcoming clone artillery cannon, loose, not in its package, which we can expect to see probably at Comic-Con in July. The two new sideshow pieces we discussed last week, the premium format Stormtrooper figure and the one-quarter scale Sand Trooper with Dewback are now available for pre-order on the Sideshow website. And Gentle Giant is now shipping the next four of their retro vintage reproduction 12-inch figures. These are Han Solo, Chewbacca, Darth Vader, and Princess Leia. Last piece of collecting news this week. Long-time listeners to This Week in Star Wars, and there are actually long-time listeners, may recall that I have previously referred to Wedge Antilles as Star Wars Collecting's most star-crossed character. It would appear that the fates are still not smiling on the only pilots who survived the assault on both Death Stars. Although Mr. Antilles has been depicted on no less than three occasions in plastic in the modern line, he has never really gotten his due as an individually carded available at retail figure. That is, until he was supposed to appear in Wave 3 of the Vintage Collection. But then, inexplicably, he was dumped from Wave 3 of the Vintage Collection, only to be added subsequently to Revision Case 11 of that wave. Well, that wave is now shipping from a number of online retailers. However, it has not been spotted at retail. And given the vagaries of Hasbro shipping as of late, and the fact that this is a Case 3, and they're about to start shipping Case 7, many fans are concerned that they will never see him at retail. And given this checkered history, I cannot really blame them. Secondhand prices on internet auction sites have the figure going for a ridiculously high amount of money, and many of the options to order or pre-order the figure from a number of retailers seem to have dried up. In short, if you see Red 2 at retail, I would advise you to pick him up. This book is devastating. This week's publishing news. Aaron Alston's seventh volume of the Fate of the Jedi series, Conviction, was published as schedule earlier this week and is available in stores and online. We encourage you to use the Amazon.com link on the front page of This Week in Star Wars. And in comic shops this week... Dark Horse has released Darth Vader and the Last Command number 5 and Legacy War number 6. Both of these are the final issues of those series. Several weeks ago it was announced that the Star Wars back catalog of novels would soon be available in ebook form. Well, it appears that that date has come, or at least will come, on June the 28th. Online book resellers for the Amazon Kindle, Apple iBooks, and Barnes & Noble's Nook Bookstore all list many, many, if not all, of the Star Wars catalog available for pre-order with release at the end of June. Prices for the novels appear to start at $7.99 depending on the title, but all prices are consistent amongst the resellers. George Lucas was not the only Star Wars grandee making television news this week. Clone Wars director Dave Filoni appeared at a Clone Wars panel last weekend at the first of the Star Wars weekends at Disney World in Orlando, at which he stated very little about the upcoming season that we did not know. However, he did reveal that the subtitle would be Battle Line. While Filoni provided no further illumination as to what this subtitle might indicate, we can infer from previous season subtitles that it indicates that there will be no battles or lines in season four. Lastly this week, it's Memorial Day weekend in the United States, and if you get tired of parades and barbecues and being just too darn hot, Spike TV will be showing the Star Wars prequels this weekend, so check them out in all their commercially interrupted glory if you're so inclined. Celebration 6. We knew it was coming, but now we know that it's really coming. Therefore, the two big mysteries still remain, when and where. 
Well, we can fairly well pin down the win, likely sometime in the summer of 2012, because conventions happen in the summer and we're already well into the summer of 2011. The where is anybody's guess. Of course, no one really knows, but everybody seems to want it in their town, or at least in the nearest big city. The Reed executive, who alluded to Star Wars Celebration 6 a couple weeks ago, said simply that we would be surprised by the location. But this could still mean anywhere, because anywhere is surprising to someone. That said, if there's one time and location we hear more than any other, it's Orlando in August of 2012. Now, I'm not entirely happy about this, and it's not because I don't want to spend another August in Orlando's heat and humidity, since it's hot and humid almost everywhere in August. It's the fact that August 2012 is 15 months from now. That's a long time. How about Orlando in May, so it matches up with Star Wars weekends? Or anywhere in May? Or next week? The long-promised Star Wars Clone Wars Season 3 Wrap-Up Roundtable should be appearing next week somewhere in your podcast feed, so keep an ear out for that. However, that means the contest is still open. If you would like a t-shirt, which was given away as a promotional freebie at the Clone Wars Theatrical Savage Press movie event last December, all you need to do is post a positive review of This Week in Star Wars on iTunes and send me an email letting me know you did. Even if you don't want that shirt, we'd appreciate the feedback. And that was This Week in Star Wars. Join us again next week for more news, notes, and developments from the galaxy far, far away. Visit our website, www.thisweekinstarwars.com, or if you're in a hurry, www.twisw.com. There you can find past episodes, links to some of the stories we discussed, as well as photo galleries and other interesting Star Wars-related tidbits. You can also find links to the other realms of the This Week in Star Wars media empire, including our Breaking News Twitter feed, our Facebook page, as well as links to email addresses where you can contact the show. If you have questions or comments or news suggestions, we encourage you to contact us at host at thisweekinstarwars.com. Help us grow the community. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a positive review at iTunes. You've been listening to This Week in Star Wars. We troll the web so you don't have to. This Week in Star Wars is not affiliated with Lucasfilm, its subsidiaries, or any other entity mentioned in this podcast. Star Wars, its characters, and creations are the property of Lucasfilm. All other trademarks are property of their respective trademark owners. This Week in Star Wars is intended for informational and entertainment purposes only. This podcast is copyright 2010, This Week in Star Wars. Invaluable technical assistance provided by WebStorm Interactive. News, comments, and questions can be directed to host at thisweekinstarwars.com. More information, links to stories presented, past episodes, and additional contact information are available at www.thisweekinstarwars.com. It's like a freaking country bear jabberoo around here.